and happy May. It's Tina today with my monthly series of Blake Canvas where I take a piece of raw chipboard and transform the background into a mixed media layout. This month I'm going to use clear gesso. I usually use white gesso, but I thought I would change it up a bit and use some clear gesso. It's actually, and maybe it's the brand I have, I think this is Windsor & Newton, it's a grittier than the normal white gesso is which sometimes can be a little bit smoother, but this has got a grit to it, which I really like that texture on the background. So I'm just applying the clear gesso to my chipboard with an old credit card. Um, I like the coverage again. It's totally random and not very specific. So I let that dry. Now what I'm going to do is take a couple of the colors of the Fresco finished paints. Um, I'm using Cotton Candy and Pansy. These are in the store. At least they were in the store when I did the video. Um, and you can see me just dabbing some of it right onto my background. And then I'm going to go ahead and spritz that with quite a bit of water. And I'm going to let it drip down the page. Um, so you can see me spraying it with water and the colors start to um, mix together. I really like this paint. It's very matte. It's got kind of a chalky, it's not chalk paint, but it has that very matte chalky finish. It has a high chalk content, which you get that matte from, and I love that finish. Um, I like shimmery things too, but this is totally different, and I really like the, the feel of it um, in regards to your other basic acrylic paints. So you can see I just sprayed it and let it drip down the page. I dried it really well with the heat gun and it took quite a bit because some of that paint was actually pretty thick on the background so it did create some texture so it's a little bit different than using spray mist on a background which doesn't have a lot of texture to it this paint did so now I'm using the I think it's pumpkin soup that was included in the make kit just to add some more contrasting color um, to my background and I did the same thing just applied it onto the background with a paintbrush and sprayed with water so now I'm going to start using some texture. I'm using these fabulous um, Natalie Callback stamps. This was one that I had in my stash from CHA. I think it's the Mish Mash set. Um, I use this one and then I use the one that's in the May kit for the background. So you can just see me. I'm using some Stays on Ink, which again, I think we had some in the store. I think we still have some. I think this is the cloudy sky, which is a really dark gray, and I kind of like that better than black because it's not as stark as black ink is, um, but it, it, it still has that, that dark color to it. So I'm just building texture to the background using the stamp. So now what I'm doing is I created some jelly prints with these um, fresco finish paints, and it worked really well. I used the fresco, fresco finish paints and the vellum paper. Um, the eight and a half by eleven size that we have in the store from Clear Print, and I freaking love that vellum paper with my jelly plate. I almost like it better than deli paper. Um, I like how it held up to the paint, and it, the paint held to it a little bit better than the deli paper that I have. Um, I know this is a little bit more expensive than the deli paper is, um, kind of, because deli paper can be kind of expensive too, but. Um, I think if you if you really like jelly prints and you like using them, I, I really like that paper almost better than the deli paper. So I'm just cutting some strips up with um, the different colors and textures, and that's what's really fun to build backgrounds with, either vellum or uh, deli paper, jelly prints, because you can build a lot of texture and a lot of layers and a lot of dimension without a lot of thickness because the paper is so thin. But you get a lot of the different patterns and everything from the jelly prints. So I'm just gluing it on. Um, sometimes I would actually put it on with some matte medium or Mod Podge, but this time I was just was lazy and I didn't feel like dragging out my Mod Podge or my matte medium so I'm just using some glossy accents to glue it down to my background um, and some of the pieces I have have some more of the black paint on it um, just for contrast so I'm kind of changing it up a little bit and just layering them on top of each other and I um, it's out of um, the page right here but there is a little section at the bottom that I'm including um, some of you can see me doing it right there including some of the jelly prints as well and I'm just ripping some smaller pieces off. I actually bought um, 
and I don't have it in the store, but it's uh, 11 by 18 of the vellum. It was a 100-piece pack, which was pretty expensive, but I have one of those extra-large jelly uh, plates that I haven't used yet, but I thought that per paper would be perfect for some really large prints that you could do some really fun things with. So now what I'm going to do is build more texture. So I'm using, um, this was in the kit, the stamp kit in May. Um, I think the wired um, stamp set, I think that's what it's called. And I'm using more of the stays on ink. I think this is mandarin, orange, I can't remember the exact color of it. Um, stays on is my favorite. And I love these new colors that they came out with from CHA. Um, they're great instead of the standard black stays on ink that you can kind of find everywhere. So I'm just stamping right over the, the vellum uh, paper and over the background to just build one layer after another and just really kind of pull it all in together. And now I'm going to use, um, this was on from the other stamp set, the, uh, the long one I had, the uh, Mishmash, and I'm using more of that cloudy sky ink. Um, again, this is just a little bit different. It creates some circular effects instead of some of the other ones and you can just see me randomly stamping it on the background just to build more layers on top of each other with the paint and the stamping and the jelly prints. So now what I did, um, I took some of the jelly prints and um, I flipped my uh, chipboard to the side. And so instead of having it drip down from the top, I thought it created kind of a cool effect to go across the side. So I'm taking more of those jelly prints and the same ones that I cut up and I'm just layering them on the bottom of the page. And you can see all of the fabulous texture and pattern um, and dimension you get by using those jelly prints because I'm just using little snippets of them here and there with the different colors and patterns from the print. And I'm just layering them on top of each other. And again, I'm using the same um, colors because I use those paints when I created my jelly print so it coordinates perfectly and this one right here the jelly print that I have in my hand um, actually was just the white and the black obviously those ones weren't those were just some of my basic acrylic paints but that really offsets and kind of makes those photos stand out a little bit more with some of the white and the black prints right there but you can see you can layer so many pieces of the vellum paper on top of each other and it, it's pretty flat. This layout actually is very flat. Um, it, it doesn't have a lot of dimension to it, but you create that faux dimension because of all the pattern in the vellum paper and from the jelly prints. So I'm trying to decide what to do um, um, with more layers and then I end up putting some of these as well. Um, on the top of the page too to kind of frame all of it in. Yeah, in this store right now, um, I ordered quite a few colors. I didn't have them in when I was creating my um, layout. Uh, all I really had for me was the the pink and the purple, and then there's a Toad Hill or Toad Hall, which was like a dark sage green, which I used on the jelly prints as well. So that's all I had. But then after I created this layout, I got a bunch of colors, and those are the ones that are in the store. Um, but I really do like the the orange and the purple and the pink together. I think it looks really well with the black and the white too. So now I'm just gluing it all down. I'm using just glossy accents again and you know I'm not making sure every corner of every piece of paper is down. I kind of like that some of them were sticking up a little bit. Um, I think actually that bottom one where you can see my my glue underneath of it, um, I end up covering some of that with a photo. I, I wish I had actually used my vellum tape runner so you couldn't have seen it, but I ended up covering most of it with my photo so you couldn't even notice anyway. So now what I'm going to do is take the same stamps that I used to stamp on top of the paint and now I'm going to pull the jelly prints kind of into that background so they don't stand out so much so it looks like it's one cohesive background. 
So I'm using the same colors, the cloudy sky, which, like I said, I actually like more than the black stays on. And I'm just stamping randomly uh, on top of the jelly print, um, letting it go over onto the chipboard as well. So then I'm using the, um, the fence pattern. I don't know what you would call that. I'm using that with the orange color of the stays on. Um, I wasn't quite sure whether the orange would clash too much, but I really did like that pop of that really bright orange color of the stays on on the background. And then I also am using that circular one. So then I just added a piece of chipboard that I had in my stash behind the photo, and I did the same with the title. I just painted it with black acrylic paint um, just to make it stand out a little bit more. So you can see some of the detail here in the close-up. Um, the chipboard that's underneath the photo is in the same colors. And then here is some images um, of close-ups of the background, and I'll have those on the blog as well. So you can kind of see them without them scrolling through the video. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial this month. Um, I would love to see what you create with just a piece of raw chipboard. Thank you for watching the video. Have a great one.